Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Chase Jarvis. Typically, our shoots involve huge crews and a bunch of really expensive high-end equipment. But for a long time, you've been asking if we would maybe make some videos that feature some stuff that wasn't so high-end and maybe a little more accessible. Well, that happens to coincide perfectly with the fact that I'm standing here in sunny Southern California working on a campaign for SanDisk. And they've asked me to create images with a wide range of cameras and cards. I'm going to show you a bunch of tips and tricks for making great pictures with everything from a point and shoot to the top of the line DSLR. Everybody, this is Chad. He's driven for us. That's the universe. So, it's so funny. It's so funny, man. <laughs> Let me show you what we got strapped to Chad's board here. This is Eric's point shoot. We swiped it out of his briefcase. We've got this rubber band and a wad of duct tape right on the shutter. And we've got the camera set to continuous mode, and that allows us to take a picture every second. This clamp here, you can probably get it at a, a pro camera store for really cheap. And uh, if you can't get it there, then try and make something at Home Depot. The card, normally we use standard cards for uh, what goes in our point and shoots because they're perfectly adequate for taking one picture at a time. In this case, since we're taking a picture every second, uh, we've stepped up to the Ultra card. We've got a 16 gig card in here. That allows us to shoot for a long time without having to take the card out. We can get thousands of pictures on this thing. So check it out. It's a great way to make a cool picture with just a point and shoot camera. Let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing right now. All I'm doing is I'm underexposing the background by about two stops to add the drama, and then I'm filling in the rider with a flash. I'm using top of the line Nikon and Broncolor gear and doing it off camera. You could use a D90 and an SB800. You can even use a point and shoot camera. All you have to make sure to do is keep that on camera flash on. Once you get the lighting set up, it's basically just about repetition. I'm using a uh, 32 gig Extreme Pro card so I can shoot all day. Right, Chad? Do one more. Here we go. All right, there's another super easy trick I want to show you. All I'm doing right now is I've got my exposure set so that my shutter speed is really low. And when these guys grind on this coping, I'm just panning with them. I'm keeping in the same place. I'm focused tight on my subject and everything else is out of focus. You can do this with any camera, whether it's a top of the line or a point and shoot. Nice, Brandon. For the people who have been traditionally shooting stills and are moving into video, when we're doing this on a professional scale, we almost always move the camera. And to do so, we use fancy dollies and cranes, but you can get almost the same effect for little to no money. We're getting movement by setting the camera on a hat and moving a skateboard. Same thing can be done this way when these guys are doing a grind. Oh. Looks really, really cool. Nice. We're also doing a little follow cam moves where I'm skating around behind people. <laughs> and we're using a helmet cam. I know you guys have seen those out there. This is an HD camera called Contour HD. It shoots a 1080 image. And in here, check out this little card. This is really cool. 16 gigs in that little card right there. That allows Brendan to skate for, uh, I think, like two hours of HD footage, maybe even three. Pretty simple setup. We just use the adhesive mount and put it right on the top of the helmet. Makes some incredible images for, uh, for not that much money. Here's a cool way to make a remote camera shot. I've got a, a Nikon D3S here, and it's got a pocket wizard, a little radio receiver on top. That's connected with this little trigger here to the 10 pin thing on this camera. 10 pin thing. It keeps the camera awake and on standby so you can fire anytime. This thing here is called a magic arm. I'll set you back about 100 bucks. That's gonna allow me to mount the camera up there and remotely fire this thing all day. See how easy this is? All I need is a drink. You the referee, Kate? Yes, I'm in charge. Sun hand lotion. <laughs> Alright, tip number 259. Try changing your perspective. Get really, really low, maybe even on the ground, or alternatively, 
bum a ladder out of your buddy's garage and get an elevated perspective. So Chase is picking up some uh, HD video on the D90. And whether you're shooting video on one of these uh, DSLRs that'll do HD video, or even some of these point and shoots will shoot that, uh, it's important that you have a fast enough card so they don't do what's called dropping frames, where there's just a blank point some, you know, inside the video. Um, we're using the SanDisk Extreme HD video card, which is specifically designed for this sort of work. What he said. One great way to make your video shots look like the pros is by moving the camera. Dollies that pros use, they cost tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. This rig is on the super cheap. We built a little frame here out of PVC that we got from the hardware store down the street. These skateboard wheels came out of the used bin at a skate shop, and they're just bolted right to these blocks of wood that are affixed to the PVC. And then the tracks are 20 foot sticks of PVC that we got from that same hardware store. Incredibly cheap and really effective. You can see the camera rolls back and forth with these. You can move your camera around and make your video shots look just like the pros. So check this out. If you look over there and you see that window on the house, point the camera at that thing over there. You see the window far right? That is the reflection of the sun. And look at what it's doing to my man Derek here. Look at that great fill light. Hang on just a second. I'm going to get this nice picture of this handsome lab. Tip number 511 here is the sun setting. Um, you guys know that I use all of the high capacity, uh, super fast pro cards, but that's because it suits my needs and the needs of my equipment. If you are using just a little point shoot, then don't hesitate to keep it really simple. There's a great value to be had in the standard card. Don't think otherwise. <laughs> That about wraps it up for this here video. Uh, I hope you picked up a handful of tidbits along the way that'll make your photography a lot better. If you didn't, I owe you one. Until then, signing off from sunny Southern California, I bid you adieu. Look at that, isn't that pretty back there?